qué hora es? Hora de aprender español. Hola amigos, bienvenidos a ¿Qué hora es? Hi friends and welcome to another episode of the show. Friends, I'm really excited about the show today because I'm going to introduce you to something that we use all the time in conversation, and that is the past tense. Now, after the show today, your conversational skills are going to be really expanded. So I'm really excited about the lesson today. So let's go to the classroom. Friends, today I want to give you something in Spanish that's going to really extend your conversational skills in Spanish. I want to talk about the past tense. Now, over the next two episodes, I'm going to be giving you two different ways to say things that have happened in the past before now, but they are distinctly different. So today I want to talk about the past tense, which is also known as the preterite. So on the next episode, we'll be talking about the other way. So I really want to set up what do we mean by the preterite so that you'll know the difference when we get to the next type. So the preterite, think about the preterite as something that happened in the past, usually one time, it's over and it's done with. Okay, this is not something that was ongoing in the past, that went on over time, um, that we can't exactly put a great time frame on. This is something that happened, it was over and it was done with. That's what we're talking about today in this episode. So let me just give you a couple of examples to just to get it in, in our minds what we're talking about. So some examples in English would be like, I saw him yesterday. That, that happened, it was done, it was over with, and you know, it's, it's kind of a finished, completed action. Okay, another example would be like, um, she called me last week. So it doesn't really have to be something recently or something long in the past, it's really something that happened, it was done and over with. Okay, so just to give you a contradictory phrase, something that would not be the predator would be, uh, we used to visit her on Sundays. That would not be the predator because that went on over time. It was, it was not a specific time frame. So that would not be the predator. That's what we'll talk about in the next episode. Well, today though, it's like I said, it, it happened, it was done and over with. So that's the predator tense. Now, the predator tense is very easy. We can do the preterite tense the same as we've been doing most verbs in previous episodes by learning a set of endings. And so I'm going to give you AR verbs and we're going to talk about a slight modification after that. Then we'll do ERs and IRs. And then at the end of the episode, I want to give you some practice sentences that you can try before our next episode. Okay, so with that being said, let's get going on the preterite tense. Okay, now to start out, let's look at our board, and you guessed it, we're going to draw a chart, okay? Now we're going to talk first about AR verbs in the preterite. Now the good thing about Spanish is we can just simply learn a new set of endings in most tenses in Spanish. And this is what the preterite tense is. It's just a new set of endings, but it implies something completely new. Okay, so let me give you these endings. Now, first of all, the yo form is e. This is a little different than what we're used to. E with an accent on it. So if I wanted to say, I swam, you remember the verb nadar we've talked about in previous episodes. Um, we could say, I swam would be yo nade. We're going to do the same thing. Let's say, for example, we've got the verb nadar. We're going to do the same thing we've always done take off that AR. If it's an ER verb, we're going to take off the ER. If it's an IR, we're going to take off the IR. Okay, so we take off that AR right there, and then we put the appropriate ending. So what we have is yo nade, for I swam. Okay, next is going to be aste. We just simply put a TE at the end of that present tense ending. So you swim or did you swim would be nadaste, okay? Now down here, we've got to make a, a little mental note. The third person, the el, ella, en usted form is an O with an accent on it, nado. Now you, first of all, when you say the word, say that accent, nado. Let's think about back when we did the present tense early on in the show. In the present tense, if you remember, this form in the present is an O with no accent. 
So we would say, I swim would be nado. Now see, if we don't say that accent, then it becomes confusing. So if we say, el nado, and we don't really say that accent, it kind of sounds like he, I swim. So accents are important. Now, I know I told you that early on, but they really are important. We have to say them and we have to write them. They're there for a reason. So make sure you remember that this accent is there in the third person singular. So nado, el nado, he swam. Ella nado, she swam. And usted nado, you in the respectful form swam. Okay? Now let's go up here. Let me erase this to prevent any confusion. And let's go up here to the right to our plural side. Now you're going to find something interesting about the nosotros form. It's the same in both tenses. It's the same in present and it's the same in the preterite. And some people say, well, how would you know the difference if you're speaking Spanish? How would they know the difference? Don't worry. Usually uh, people understand by context. They do. And, and if you're talking about something that happened yesterday and you already know, the person already knows you're talking about yesterday or sometime in the past, they're going to understand that you, when you say nadamos, that it means we swam in the past. Okay, the vosotros form, our not so popular form, is asteis, vosotros asteis, nada asteis, there we go. So, asteis is the ending. <clears throat> and then down here on the bottom right is aron, A R O N. They swim, ellos nadaron, or ellas nadaron. You all, plural, swim, ustedes nadaron. Okay, so that is our base, those are our basic endings for AR verbs in the preterite tense. Now, I do want to show you one little modification here that we need to look at. Over here <clears throat> to, the, to the right, I'm going to put a couple of different types of verbs. First of all, there's the C-A-R verbs and the Z-A-R verbs and the G-A-R verbs. Now, I've told you many times that we have rules in language, any language, and we have rule breakers. Here are the rule breakers. But there's only one little thing you need to remember about this, okay? When a verb ends in C-A-R or Z-A-R or G-A-R, we have to look at the yo form specifically in the preterite tense. We're only talking about the yo form in the preterite tense, okay? That's it. None of the other forms, no other tenses. Okay, so let me give you an example here. Buscar is an AR verb that ends with C-A-R. There's an example of uh, a C-A-R. And let's look at a, a Z-A-R. To begin, empezar. And then a G-A-R, we could use jugar, to play. And these are good examples of these three types. Now what happens is when we put this into the preterite tense, we're going to have to make a slight modification. Remember, only the yo form only in the preterite. The other forms of these verbs will do just the same, okay? Now, what we're gonna do with the C-A-R verb, buscar, for example, when we put this into the preterite tense, normally it would look like this. Now remember, this is only the yo form, the yo form, not the el or the ella, okay? So, yo forms, I'll put that up here just so we can remember that as a reference. Okay, normally it would look like this, right? We would put the, the E with an accent for I looked for or I searched for, but we have to make a little modification. With C-A-R verbs, what we're going to do is we're going to change this C into a Q-U, and then we're going to put that. So I looked for your busque. And that's, that's the only thing we have to remember with C-A-R verbs is that we change the yo form Change that C to a Q-U, okay? That's not too hard to remember. Now let's look at Z-A-R verbs. We're going to make a little modification here too. Normally you think we'd just take off the A-R and we'd put the E with the accent. Well, what we're going to have to do is change this Z to a C. Empecé. I began. Yo empecé. Okay? Now for G-A-R verbs we'll have to take off the AR and we will simply put a U and then an E. Yo jugué, I played. And so that's the only little modification that we have to remember. C-A-R's, Z-A-R's, and G-A-R's. Only yo forms, 
only in the preterite. Okay, so just put that in your notes and try to start practicing a few of those. And before long, you won't have to think too much about it. It'll just become second nature. And the biggest thing is, the more you practice, you internalize the language. And internalize means that you put it into practice so much to the point that it becomes natural and it sounds right to you. I promise, the more you practice, the more that this all becomes easy. All right, with that being said, let's look at ER and IR verbs. Okay, we'll erase our chart so we can put up the ER verbs. Now, ER verbs, I have a little surprise for you here because um, normally you have to learn ERs and IRs and ARs separately. But here's the good news about the preterite tense. Once you learn the ER endings, you automatically have the IR endings because in the preterite, they are the same. So this helps you out a little bit. So I'm going to put actually ER and IR verbs. Now, just so I'll feel better, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Make sure you don't confuse IR with IR, the verb to go. I know I've said that before, but just so we're on the same page and we're clear. All right, so we're talking about verbs that end with IR and verbs that end with ER here. Okay, now let's look at the endings for this. So the first one here is going to be E. I with an accent. Make sure you put that accent. It's very important, okay? So let's say, for example, um, the verb comer we'll use as our ER example, and we'll use escribir to eat and to write. Comer means to eat, escribir means to write. Let's use those as our two examples of an ER and IR. So if I wanted to say, I ate, take off the ER, Again, as we always do, and I would say yo comí, okay? Now, if I wanted to say I wrote, as in I wrote a letter, I could take off the IR here and put this on there and say yo escribí, okay? Very easy. The next one, you're going to see it's kind of similar to the AR, but this is a slight difference. No accent, este would be the ending. Now, este, if I wanted to just use some more examples, did you eat? Of course, we don't say did. That doesn't really exist in that context in Spanish. We call that the do nothing do. So we're really just saying you ate. So we take off the, e, the ER and we say comiste. Did you eat? Okay. Did you write? Escribiste. Okay. Now let's go down here to our third person. Yo. Now still got that accent on the O, but it's got an I in front of it as well. So, yo, so he ate, él comió, she wrote, ella escribió. Okay, very easy. Now let's go to this one over here, the nosotros form, and you'll see that it's a lot the same as it is in the present and similar to the IR or the AR. Imos, so we ate, take off the ER, comimos. We wrote, nosotros escribimos. The next ending for vosotros is isteis. Nosotros comisteis o escribisteis. And then finally, we have down in the bottom right, ieron, I-E-R-O-N, ieron, say all your vowels. So, they ate, Ellos comieron. They wrote, ellas escribieron. Now that is the preterite tense for normal verbs. So what you need to do is to start doing like we did a long time ago with those present tense endings in previous episodes and start putting in your mind that left hand, I'm going to mirror you, that left hand, how we used to go through the endings, okay? Do the same thing. E, aste, o, amos, asteis, aron for AR verbs. Get those down on the chart in your mind so that when you're speaking Spanish, you're going you're gonna to be able to just think, okay, where's the pronoun? Wh which ending am I using? And you're going to be able to spit it out in conversation just like that, okay? And then start going, e, iste, yo, imos, isteis, yeron. Just practice that while you're watching TV or having dinner. Uh, you know, you don't have to do it out loud, but just 
Just practice it so that it's internalized in your head. And most of all, really put these verbs, you know, go on, go on the internet, look up some ER verbs and IR verbs that you haven't learned, start putting them into practice. And again, you'll internalize this. All right, now to wrap up this section on preterite, I want to go over one other verb. It's actually two verbs. Uh, you know, we have those irregular verbs that we always have to deal with that don't quite follow the pattern. And so we're going to look at one of those right now. And this is actually one set of verb conjugations, but it's two different verbs. Okay, so let's draw our chart. Now this verb, or these verbs, we're talking about ser, and now we're talking about the verb ir, okay? The verb ir, which means to go. And I'm going to put that right here because I don't want anybody to start thinking um, verbs that end with ir. I frequently have this issue with my students. Um, and I say ir, to go, and they're thinking ir verbs. Or I say ir verbs, and they're thinking to go. They're thinking opposites. So just want to be clear with you. So ser, which means to be, and ir, which means to go, they are actually the same in the preterite tense. And I know what you're thinking right off the bat. You might be thinking, well, how does that make sense? But the more you think about it, probably the more it will make sense. Um, it doesn't really work well in English, but it does in Spanish. Okay, so these are this is a set of irregular verbs are not going to necessarily follow uh, any pattern we've seen today, but it, there will be some similarities. So let's look at the first one. These are all going to start with F. The first one is fui. So let's think about this for a moment. Fui means I went. So I went anywhere. That's your fui in that preterite sense, not I used to go or any other structure. It's simply I went one time, done and over with. Okay, but it also means I was in the context of ser. Now remember what ser is really. It is ser means to be, but in that permanent way. And if you remember Poppin, P-O-P-I-N, permanent condition, uh, occupation, place of origin, identification, nationality. Those are the conditions under which we use ser, that permanent structure. Okay, so it means I was in the sense that we use Ser. So be thinking about some instances that would go with ser that would uh, demonstrate when we would use this in the preterite, okay? Just be working that out because it'll come out easier in your conversation. And then next, the tool form is fuiste. So you went or you were in the ser sense, fuiste. Now here is our third person structure. It is fue. Fue means he went or he was, she went, or she was, you in that respectful sense, you were, or you went. Now up here in the top right in our plural side, the nosotros form is fuimos, we went, we were. This one, our vosotros form, fuisteis. And then finally, fueron, they went, or they were, are you all, plural, went, are you all, were. Okay, so this is the same thing. Now, I want to challenge you, if you're new to Spanish, which most of us are if you're watching the show, think about instances in which you would use this, especially with, when it comes to ser, because this takes some sorting out. Not only are you trying to think of the verb itself, we, we stay fue, et cetera, you're trying to think of, okay, it, would I use ser o estar? Sort out those situations. And remember, we only use uh, estar to say how you feel and where you are. Also, you can say temporary condition or location. I find that most of my students do better when they think of how you feel and where you are. That seems to eliminate more problems with them. So that a lot of them go with that way of thinking about it. It works really well. So remember, that's the only time we're going to use uh, estar. So think about situations with ser in the preterite. That might be something really good for you to do before watching the next episode. Make sure you have it down and you feel okay about it. Now, to wrap things up today, I'm going to erase, and I want to give you some sentences. We won't call it homework. We don't like homework, right? 
But I want to give you some sentences that you can try on your own. Now, one of the things I wanted to do is to provide you an opportunity to work a little bit on your own because, you know, a lot of times on the show, we don't have time. We have so much to cover. We don't have time for you to really ponder these things uh, on your own. So I want to give you um, about you know, five sentences or so to try on your own before the next episode. This will give you an opportunity to put what you've learned today into practice and really ponder it. Okay. So here come a few sentences for you. And on the next episode, we'll check and see how you did. So the first sentence I want to give you was, is this one. They arrived around one o'clock yesterday. They arrived around one o'clock yesterday. Now I'll give you a couple of reminders around when we're talking about time. Remember, we learned it before. It's a eso de. A eso de. And yesterday is ayer. A-Y-E-R. Ayer. Okay. Now you remember how to do time. So one o'clock, we're always going to, remember we're going to use la for it. But I don't want to tell you too much. Okay. So <clears throat> next one. I began at four o'clock. I began at four o'clock. Now. Helpful hint, remember what we have to do. Begin is empezar, Z-A-R verb. Don't be tricked by it. Remember what to do. Next one, she wrote a letter. Straight up I-R verb conjugation. She wrote a letter. The next one, we ate at 7 o'clock in the morning. We ate at 7 o'clock in the morning. Now remember, we have a definite time. 7 o'clock is a definite time. So how do we say in the morning? We use de la mañana, right? De is definite. Definite time we use de. He went to the store. He went to the store. All right, There's, there, those are a few sentences that you can use. The next time we're together, we'll go over those sentences, see how you did. I bet you're going to get it perfect.